When you're thinking about a basketball player, what's the first thing that usually comes in mind? Their height. Victor Wimiyama was the first overall pick this year. and He's like 7'4". Kevin Durant, Chet Holgram, all these giants that walk the earth. When you look at the NBA, the average height of the NBA player is 6'6". Six six. But every once in a while, we do come across these players that break this stereotype. But just seeing these players is one thing. When they're your best player is when things get a little tricky. And that's what we're seeing now in the NBA. Jalen Brunson, despite being six foot two, is leading the New York Knicks to one of the best records in the Eastern Conference. And no one wants to talk about his skill set. It seems like all the conversation about Jalen Brunson is about his height or lack thereof. If your best player is small, you're not winning. John Stockton, Allen Iverson, Steve Nash, you could go down the list. Over the last 20 years, the finals MVP has been under six foot four only three times, meaning the odds that Jalen Brunson breaks the Knicks 50 year championship drought are less than 1%. But we can take this even further. If we take out Dwayne Wade, every finals MVP over the last 20 years has been over six six, meaning in the last 20 years, only four finals MVPs have been below the league's average. That is 0.2% of all finals MVPs. It is a rarity that you can be undersized in the NBA and win the finals MVP. But making the NBA itself is a rarity. Winning two NCAA basketball championships is a rarity. Signing a $100 million deal after being a second round pick is a rarity. All things that Jalen Brunson has done at his height. But uh, everywhere I've gone since high school has started for me, it's always been Jalen Brunson's good, but like it's always that but. You said but. What, what was the but about? It was too slow, uh, not athletic enough, um, too small, um, all those things that, uh, that don't measure heart. And um, that's what I have. Brunson has overcome adversity his entire career. Coming out of high school, he was a five-star recruit and found himself as the starting point guard on Villanova. While most of his graduating class went on to be one and done players, Brunson struggled his freshman year and actually ended up staying three whole years in college, something that is unheard of in these times. His third year was his breakout year and he swept every single player of the year award imaginable. Despite having a great junior year and leading Villanova to an NCAA championship, Brunson fell to the second round where he was drafted by the Dallas Mavericks, who were more focused on the big splash they made early in the draft, trading for Luka Doncic, a guy at the same position as Jalen Brunson. For the first three years of his career, Jalen Brunson was the backup to Luka in Dallas. Until his fourth year, his breakout season, Brunson was moved from the bench to a starting role and worked his way up to being the second option right behind Luka, increasing his points per game from 12 points to 16 points in his fourth season. In the playoffs, the Dallas Mavericks were faced off against the Utah Jazz, where Luka was going to miss the first three games of the first round, putting the ball in Jalen Brunson's hand. And what he did was show out. Winning two out of the three games, he averaged 30 points while Luka was away. This proved to the world that Jalen Brunson was a legit point guard in this league. His breakout year led him to sign a four-year, $104 million deal with the New York Knicks, a heavily criticized deal at the time. But well, Jalen Brunson's a nice player, and I know he played great against Utah, and I know he averaged 60, but it's still Doncic's team. I mean, he's going to make them that much better. They're going to move heaven and earth and give him $110 million, bring the father in and everything else. <laughs> but, I mean, do we think Brunson is a guy that is going to bring them to a second-round playoff series? That's not, he's not. No one believed in Brunson, an undersized three-year college player, second round pick was worth this type of money. But once again, Brunson proved everybody wrong, averaging a career high in points and assists in his first year with the New York Knicks. And this year, he was named to his very first NBA All-Star team. He has proven the critics wrong time and time again. To simply say that Jalen Brunson is too small to win in the NBA is unfair to a guy who has proven everybody wrong his entire life. Have you ever seen that scene from Dumb and Dumber when the guy's like, so you're telling me there's a chance? You mean not good like? One out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yeah, that one. To me, that's how Knicks fans are. They're delusional. Every single year, I swear to you, a Knicks fan comes to me and tells me, oh, we're going to win this year. We're going to win. You haven't won in 50 years, buddy. 
You haven't won in 50 years. But they believe it every single year. Especially this year because their team is good. Even though all the odds, all the numbers, all the history says that Jalen Brunson is too small to win. But I'd be a bad YouTuber if I didn't play into the game. If I didn't look at how could the Knicks actually win. Because it's not impossible. It's happened before. The two people that everyone likes to point to is Stephen Curry and Isaiah Thomas. Both of those teams won with smaller guards. I like to look a little more modern when I was watching basketball. In the last 20 years, there's been three finals MVPs that have been under 6'4". Chauncey Billups, Tony Parker, and Stephen Curry. For Jalen Brunson to add into this list, it makes me wonder, what does he and the Knicks need to do? Is there something that those three did or all had in common that made them win a championship with an undersized guard? Like, how is it possible that those three were able to do something in the NBA that has less than 1% chance of ever happening? I gotta really start researching this. Figure this out. So, I think I just figured it out. How the New York Knicks can win a NBA championship with Jalen Brunson as their best player. Now, this guy on Reddit made a great post where he broke down the last 40 NBA champions starting from 2020 all the way to 1980. And he noticed one thing that they all had in common. They view the top five in offensive rating or top five in defensive rating. Now, there are three outliers to this rule, but neither of the three outliers that are on this list affect us because none of them had small guards. But if we do look at the three teams who did have small guards as the Spurs, Pisces, and Warriors, we notice there is something they all have in common. And that's defense. The 2004 Detroit Pistons have been labeled the greatest defense ever. After acquiring Rasheen Wallace halfway through the season, the Pistons allowed only 79.7 points a game, never allowing a team over 95 points in the playoffs, even against the highly powered Shaq and Kobe Lakers. They are one of two teams in NBA history to ever hold a team under 60 points in a playoff game. More to the story, the Pistons were dominant defensively, and they are the standard of how defense should be played. They finished the year second in defensive ratings in 2004, and Ben Wallace was named all defensive first team. The 2007 San Antonio Spurs is another great defense of the modern era, with a 106.5 DRTG. As you can see on the list, the Pistons are near the top of the list, but in the middle you have the 2007 San Antonio Spurs. They finished the season second in defensive rating, and Tim Duncan was named to all defensive first team. Now, who you might not see on these lists or in some of these ratings are the 2022 Golden State Warriors mainly because they are a fairly new NBA champion. Nevertheless, they were still one of the best defenses. With a defensive rating of 106.9, they led the league in defense, behind Draymond Green, who was named to all defensive second team. Did you notice what all three of these teams had in common? They had a top two defensive rating and an all defensive caliber player. That seems to be the formula in the NBA if you want to win with the undersized guard. Now let's look at this year's Knicks team. Do they have a top two defensive rating or an all defensive caliber player? For most of this year, I would have told you no. The Knicks rank ninth in defensive rating and have no player on their team that is an all defensive caliber player. But that all changed in December when they traded for OG Ananobi. Ananobi is considered one of the best wing defenders in the entire league. He is the reigning steals leader in the NBA and made all defensive second team last year. In the short time that Ananobi has been with the Knicks, he has skyrocketed their defensive rating to number one after the trade. His 7-2 wingspan gives the Knicks the ability to play small ball because Ananobi can guard everywhere from the 1 through the 5. A luxury that the Knicks didn't have for most of the season. And uh, you know, he has to guard the best player, so it's not an easy job, but he did. With Ananobi there, the Knicks now have the two qualifications they need to win with Jalen Brunson at the helm. They have a top two defensive rating and an all defensive caliber player. The only thing now is the Knicks have to get healthy. They are missing a lot of their key players, including Ananobi. But when they do get healthy, this team has a legitimate chance of competing for an NBA championship. So even with this great defense and this very talented roster that the Knicks have put together, including moves they made in the trade deadline, is Jalen Brunson still too small to lead the Knicks to a championship? Yes. But to say that it's impossible is just not true. If the Knicks can continue to play this style of defense through the playoffs, they have a legitimate chance of breaking the New York Knicks 50 year championship drought. And Jalen Brunson once again has a chance to prove all the critics wrong and do something that has less than 1% chance of ever happening. So if you're a Knicks fan and this gave you any sort of hope that your team actually has a chance to win a championship do me a favor and drop a like and send this to a friend that is also a Knicks fan or 
If you're not a Knicks fan and you just enjoy basketball and love this video, drop a like and subscribe. Regardless, if you didn't do either of that, I still hope you have an amazing day. Thank you for watching and God bless.